All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit, uh, but I've been very, very busy. But I wanted to jump on here to chat about a couple things. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do is to showcase a portfolio update between the two main accounts, uh, the Composer and the TD Ameritrade. So this right here is year to date. So you can see uh, we started the year in Composer 209,000. Um, and you can see as of right now, we're at 245. And um, let's go to TD Ameritrade right here. And here we are here in TD Ameritrade. And you can see that we started the year at uh, 449. And today at this moment, we are at 469, flirting with 470 there. So I tallied up beforehand and um, basically we are at um, approximately 53,000. Um, that was those before we launched here. Um, so definitely a good start to the year. Um, 2022 de definitely was a down year, but uh, starting to recover a little bit and, uh, and, and, and get some of those gains. So very happy with that. Um, and I've uh, been really doing a lot of uh, work in Composer, um, refining some symphonies, adding symphonies. And, um, and, and that's kind of what I wanted to transition to next. Um, basically, I was one of the first, I think Ben had said that maybe the first 10 users, 20 users. So I was one of the first users in Composer uh, in the beta. And then um, I was able to kind of go live, I believe, in June of 2021. So probably one of the first people to go live. I was running a single symphony and then Composer went multi-symphony and it's, and it's grown from there. And um, so it's been, it's been really fascinating to see, uh, you know, Composer's growth uh, from the beginning until now. But one of my observations, uh, one, of my, one of my main observations from being in in the beginning is seeing how we've kind of gone what I would call like first generation, second generation, third generation uh, style of symphonies. And um, the first generation, I would say, were more just kind of rebalancing symphonies. So even something like Hedge Fundy, uh, which is one of the most famous internet strategies, if you will, you know, it's, uh, what is it, 55, 45, TMF, Pro rebalanced. And you can kind of maybe play with some other leverage ETFs and do some rebalancing. Um, it's kind of the basis for my balanced alpha and all weather alpha, though all weather alpha is based on, on Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio is all weather, um, which you can read Tony Robbins' book, Money Master the Game, and kind of get a rundown or just watch a YouTube video on it. Um, but... And then the, the second generation, I would say, included um, some basic logic, uh, just, you know, I'll give a quick example here. So if uh, SPY is above its 200-day moving average, own SPY, else BND, BND being a sort of a bond index. And, and maybe there was one other uh, logic-based conditional on there. Um, but so that would be kind of maybe like a second generation. And then the third generation is what you're seeing a lot in, in the discord. And it's the symphonies with three, four, five, six pages of logic nested, um, nested symphonies within symphonies. So things that are, that are nested within each other, um, really complicated, complex. And obviously then, you know, these symphonies have been criticized, criticized, uh, as being overfit. You know, oh, the, the back tests, um, although they're showing amazing back tests, that's just because it was a 10 year bull market and we're not going to be in a bull market. And, and these these back tests are irrelevant. So I just wanted to kind of showcase um, three what I would call third generation symphonies. Um, two are by uh, my friend Derek Nielsen. Uh, we befriended him in the, in the discord. We chat a lot now. And um, actually, I think this channel. Uh, my YouTube videos uh, brought him into Composer. And he's kind of teamed up with a guy, Garen Phillips, in the Discord um, and, and others, and they've really, really built some, some unique things. So I just wanted to showcase 
um, two of his, and then one of a guy, Jay Wong Jung, who was active for a time um, in the original Slack channel. And, um, and the reason being is I'm gonna switch screens here to that, but I wanna show that this is real capital. So this isn't back-tested capital, um, this is real capital. And so you can see some of the results. So let's just go to order 6.6, six, and I'm not going to get involved in the logic of it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll leave that to Derek or for another video. Um, but so you can see here, what Composer added here is they added a live and simulated, which wasn't there before. It, it was added fairly recently. Um, and basically the simulated is the back test. So we can go in and we can go to simulated and I'll do that in a second. Um, and then we can go here live. So live is when you actually have allocated capital to the symphony. You can see how it's actually performing, not, not merely a back test. So let's just um, scroll down here. So you can see again, this is real capital. Um, I've deposited 1550 into this particular symphony and it's up almost $3 today, so up 0.17%. Uh, um, it looks like I went live with it, as you can see right here, on uh, J Monday, January 23rd, is when I went live with it. And you can see the annualized return, and that's the math basically going from the time I invested till, till today, um, and then annualized. Um, so you can see, you know, it's up a couple hundred dollars, but if this continues to perform, you can see what it would do over a full year. Um, you can see the sharp ratio, the actual sharp ratio, not a simulated, not a back test, 3.17. Um, it's done really well. And we can go on the simulated. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of, you know, criticism, again, the word overfit, overfitting, hindsight bias. Um, but you can see that this is real capital. And real returns and, and albeit a short amount of time um let's see if we can switch over here if it's gonna yeah so let's just do like a quick three year so it's running here so you can see like it's an obscene kind of return right it's almost it's almost comical in its obscenity, uh, but uh, yeah, so it's, you know, 2,432%, you know, return over the last uh, three years. So uh, interesting, but, uh, but, but having said that, and, 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 you know, just chuckling at it, you can see that even in just this few months, this few month period, um, that it's living up to the hype, so to speak, that that's again, real capital. So, um, so we'll see, and I'll continue to do these videos and monitor. So if I'm wrong, someone can come in here and say, see, I told you so this is just hindsight bias and overfitting, but the returns, um, you know, aren't, aren't nearly what you thought they would be. So I'll just take, um, you know, two more just to kind of show you real capital real returns um this is uh derek's manhattan project um you can see again looks like on january 23rd um i allocated some capital um going back so it's been you know not quite three months so what two and a half months here i'm just going to scroll up I'm just going to make sure that that's I'm going to go all time. Yep. So that's, that's looking. So you can see, you know, up about almost $200 from allocation till now. It annualizes that at two, uh, 211.1. You can see it's down, you know, 0.31, uh, $3 today. And then this is uh, the third one. I wanted to showcase Jay Wong Jung. I always wonder if I'm saying his name right. And it looks like I allocated a little bit earlier for, I'll just click 
put that article on. There we go. So it looks like maybe the first of the year, um, almost the end of the year, it looks like December 30th. So it's had a little bit longer of a runway. Um, so January, so a little more than three months. You can see that $410, whoop, showing its present date, present holdings. So I'm trying to scroll up here. Yeah, invested since December 29th, but look at the annualized, you know, 83%. And, and this brings me to an investing truism that over years of reading every investment book that I can get my hands on, and I know I repeat it a lot, but I, I think it's, it's quite relevant. Um, you know, and, and in a way, it's descended from uh, Albert Einstein's quote, quotation on compound interest, many other quotations on compound interest. But that when you study investing, many people who index, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, in my opinion, but if many people who index are going to generally get a 7 to an 11% return. And, you know, what, a 10% return doubles every seven years. So when you do things like dividend reinvestment, dollar cost averaging, over the long term, you invest 500 bucks a month, 1,000 bucks a month, 1,500 bucks a month in a vanilla index fund, you're gonna do quite well, uh, you know, especially if you start young. The 1% of investors, and, and again, I'll name drop here, so you take a Carl Icahn, you take a David Tepper, um, you, know, you take a Warren and Charlie of Berkshire, uh, you know, Monish is, and I think they're also mid-20s. Generally, you're going to get in that 20 to 30 percent range. Um, even Dalio, uh, who's as much now, I would say, a public intellectual like a Nassim Taleb, um, as someone who was, you know, run as uh, Bridgewater. Um, Bridgewater is, I believe, it's like in the mid 15s. You know, I could be incorrect on that. So, um, you know, so, and if someone has more information on that, feel free to, to write in on that. But um, that's for my understanding. So th they're not in even that, that over that 20, but when you compound capital over that 20, you know, 20 to 30% range, a small amount of capital, $10,000 or $50,000, $100,000 really multiplies quite quickly. So you can see here, and I'm showing these particular strategies, 83.9 with Jay Wong's. Uh, and again, it's annualized, it's been three months, you know, and it's only, uh, you know, $70 increase, you're right, the 410 to 480. But if if this is able to compound capital above, just even above that 20% range, it doesn't even have to be 83.9, but even that 20 to 30% range, um, you know, things happen very quickly uh, and things multiply very quickly. So just wanted to bring that up. And again, it's something where I'm saying it without, I feel without egotism or hubris, because I certainly feel like I could be wrong, but I just wanted to show these three to show that some of these second, third generation, I would even really say third generation strategies uh, with a lot more um, nested conditionals and such, uh, symphonies within symphonies uh, are, are doing well with real money. So I just wanted to showcase that. Um, and, and that's pretty much it for today. The last thing I, I wanted to just touch upon, uh, people who follow this channel know that I sold my interactive brokers, what I had left in interactive brokers after I transferred um, the approximately 180,000 to uh, Composer, it was about 80,000 left in there. And I sold that and I used that to um, pick up an Airbnb. Well, what I turned into an Airbnb in North Carolina, it was actually a vineyard property that I owned, a 40 acre property in the mountains of North Carolina that I sold in 2016, was able to buy it back. Um, and it's done really well as an Airbnb. Um, I've, I'm actually a super host now. Uh, I have 10 five-star reviews and um, I'm at about, I launched basically November 1st and I have uh, about 30,000 in gross revenue. So you can see 18.5 for, and you can see the summer months, you know, in North Carolina, the expected 33, 28, you can see, I think July, even. Um, July, I have a lot of VRBO, so that's actually probably over three for July, August. You can see January was surprisingly good too. And then we can actually go back. So you can see 18 and change there. And you can see, so since I launched, so if you had 
18, six, or about 25. And then I have about five or 10,000 on Verbo. So third, you know, 30 to 35,000. So that's pretty cool. I'm really excited about that. And, um, you know, want, want to continue to push that. I might put some other, um, other homes uh, on the property and, uh, but yeah, I want to keep it going and just people love it. I've, you know, 10 five-star reviews. So people just love the waterfalls and the beauty of nature. And, uh, yeah. So, um, and the, I guess the last thing before I go is, um, composer launched composer pro and what that did. And, and I can't pull up my account and funding cause it'll sh actually show my account number. Otherwise I would, those are on pro and it's $288 a year. Um, so it's $24 a month. The trading time is pushed from three o'clock to about three forty-five, I believe. Uh, my trades end up happening around three fifty, three fifty-one. It looks like um, they probably go out around three forty-five. But that will actually put the live trading in theory closer to the simulated because the simulated is based on market close. So you're getting much closer to market close than three o'clock when they went out previously. And then with the pro, you get all of their updates. Whereas if you stay with, um, if you don't upgrade, you have Composer Legacy, and then you just get the 3 p.m. trade times and any updates that they they release, which they're working on, I'm sure a lot of different things, um, you wouldn't get access to. So you would just kind of be a legacy member. Um, I paid the 288 in my account, and I paid the 288 in my mom's account. Just really want to support Composer. I, as you guys know, you know, obviously I'm biased, like you know, but I feel that. Um, it's, it's pretty revolutionary what they've built, um, you know, all those guys over there. So I just really want them to succeed and, and thrive and, uh, turn a massive profit. So, um, you know, so I signed up for my mom's and my own account. Um, a lot of people in the discord also have, have signed up. Um, if you, if you don't pay, like if you sign up now, and I think you can do back tests and such, but you can't actually live trade again, unless you were grandfathered, um, and you're already live trading as composer legacy. So, um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it for today. Um, appreciate, uh, all the comments, likes, subscribes, uh, this channel is flirting with, uh, 2000 followers, about 1880, I think somewhere in there. So, um, you know, and again, I do apologize, not, not posting as much. It's been so busy with different things. Um, but hope to continue to post. Uh, and share some of these uh, composer symphonies, a bunch of other investing things. So, all right, guys, take care. Ciao.